The timpani etude is number 62 out of the Saul Goodman book. The dotted quarter equals 96, and because of the tempo, we'll be beating three eighth notes per dotted quarter. So every measure will be made up of well, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Let's first start with talking about some basic timpani fundamentals. You're going to need to have drums that can be put in tune. So if your pedals are not holding forward or are not holding down, your band director needs to get them to where they're within range of themselves. There's an article on the Vic Firth website that could help your band director make your timpani sound really good. If the heads are in decent shape, they can get them in tune with themselves, and if the heads are in poor shape, it can help your band director make the head change. You want to find a good playing spot on your drums. A general rule of thumb is a third of the way into the center of the head. So if you kind of dissect the drum into thirds, here's your center, you want to play roughly here. Every drum will be different because the smaller drums, of course, you won't go as far in. But the basic, you know, most important fact is that you need to get a good sound out of your drum. So mess around with that, but that's a good place for you to start. This particular etude can be played either seated or standing up. I prefer to do it seated so that I'm playing on a good playing spot on my timpani mallet. While seated, you want the drums to be positioned to where you can easily reach them without a lot of shoulder and arm motion. A common mistake I see with high school students is that they buzz roll on the timpani. Timpani rolls should be single stroked, and they also don't have to be incredibly fast. They just need to have a good even sound. It's more important for both hands to be producing the same sound. So you don't have to, to work really hard to have a nice roll as long as everything is even. In this particular etude, the rolls are not connected. So there's going to be a lift at the end of every roll. So you'll have a slight break between the roll and the next note. Measure one and measure two are perfect examples of this. All right, let's talk about mallet selection. It's really important that you use an actual timpani mallet and not a tenor mallet or a small bass drum mallet or snare drum sticks. You need to have an actual timpani mallet. That's what they're designed for. In this piece, we have several different things to look at. There are rolls, there are 16th notes, and there are dynamic changes. So you need to find a mallet that's suitable for all of these things. In measures that have 16th notes that require articulation, you may select a hard, tightly woven felt mallet. Although this mallet sounds great for this particular measure with the articulation and the 16th notes, in the first two measures with rolls, it won't be as smooth. Your next option may be a soft mallet that sounds really good on rolls, but would be not so good on your 16th notes. My particular preference is to go with a mallet that's somewhere in between. I can get some articulation, yet I can still have a nice quality of sound on my rolls. The version of the book that I'm working out of has stickings already written in. These may or may not work for you. I didn't follow them exactly because some of it doesn't work for me personally. Go through slowly and see if you can work it out with the stickings written in. And if these stickings don't work for you and you're not comfortable with cross sticking, work with your teacher to figure out what's going to work best. As far as muffling is concerned, there's only two places that I muffle in the etude. Going into line four, and at the end. In the last measure, it's important to not let the bottom two drums ring. So as I'm coming up the drums to the top drum, and I've played the last drum, I can either let that ring while I dampen these, or dampen these, and then dampen this right on count four. When looking at your dynamics in this piece, we have some really long crescendos again. Make sure you don't get there too soon. Let it be gradual all the way throughout the line. There are many dynamics in this piece of music. You need to make sure you're very consistent as you play it. At the end of line one, there's a fortissimo, as there is at the end of the piece of music. Make sure those two fortissimos are exactly the same. It's very easy to overplay timpani and make nasty sounds on the drum, so you want to make sure you're getting a nice sound and don't play too loudly. 
You don't have to have timpani at your home to practice this etude. You can set up pillows as long as they're set apart far enough so you feel like you're playing on the drums. You can play on concert toms, again making sure they're set up where you're you're playing in the actual playing positions. But what's really important prior to your audition is that you play on the drums that you're actually going to audition on. Speaking of that, I encourage you to take your own drums to the audition. Yes, they're big and bulky and hard to move around, but playing on a new set of drums that you've never played on for the audition is not recommended at all. This timpani etude is not all that challenging, but that just means that everyone else is gonna be able to play it as well. Start early, and really strive for perfection on it.